Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Catherine, the Big Vision Coach, and welcome to the Daily One Command. And uh, we have been talking about vision for the last several days. And today we are going to be talking about what stops you from connecting to your vision. Like we always say, I've got to find the vision. When I see what to do, I know what to do, then I can go from there. But what what can actually stop us, you know? And um, we're going to do a, a, let me see, we're going to cover a lot of points just to kind of get your juices flowing. Then we're going to do some commands on how to activate those creative centers in your brain. And uh, this is why I love the one command because it starts with the idea that one, you literally don't know how you are going to accomplish your goal. You don't know how you're going to think a new way, see a new way, feel a new way. You don't know how to imagine yourself in new circumstances. And this isn't just a mind game. I mean, the statement alone of, I don't know how, and you would state what you want. I only know it so now, and I'm fulfilled, causes your mind to relax. It backs away from whatever's in front of you, and it sends your mind, your beautiful reticular activating system, into a new search. And it first starts with your own experience, then into whatever you may have seen, heard, heard about, right? Watched in a movie, read in a book. It, it starts expanding to outside of your experience. Well, when we combine the six, the uh, one command statement with the six steps to theta of the one command, when we're going from our ordinary consciousness, our ordinary state of being, which we say is the beta brain, which is a very important function. This is our, you know, frontal lobe. This is logic and planning, long-term planning. This is time. You know, when we think about the past, the present, the future, that's the frontal lobe. Strategy. I mean, all of that is so important. But our brain is conditioned through habit, you know, not only our actions, but our habit of thought. And our neurology is conditioned by our emotions. And so we have this programming. And if we have victim programming and we want to step into the creative, I can have anything that I want uh, world, our neurology is not matching that. And what will happen is you um, actually aren't able to go through the correct sequences to achieve your desire. Your victim um, programming, which is identity right, and strategy, and this is how the world's supposed to work, and this is um, your model of the world. Now, I'm kind of rushing through this, but this is a neurological pathway. And what happens is, I don't know if you've ever had this happen where things are going good and then you start feeling worried because it feels like the other shoe may drop any time. Well, that's a sign that you are used to things not working out for you. You're used to things being taken away from you. It can feel wrong to be happy because something always happens. And that is victim programming because then you're tense, you're upset, you start watching and guarding, you try to um, make your world smaller to stay safe. And the thing is, there's actual relief for a lot of people when things don't work out. Okay. So there's a deeper talk that we do about that in commanding wealth and teaching the one command. But what we're talking about today is finding your vision. And we're going to talk about what can stop you. Okay. And then we're going to do commands around that. And I just want to say a quick good morning. If you haven't had a chance to, uh, like the StreamYard app that's in the description. You'll find it kind of towards the bottom of the description, wherever you're um, looking at. It could be here or here, depending on where you are. If you are on YouTube watching this, then um, I can see your comments directly. I want to mention, I do have the YouTube link in the description. And the reason you want to be sure and go there and subscribe is that I put all these talks together in special playlists, but then you have a way to access everything. 
The other thing I want to mention too is that all of these videos and the audios that go with them are found in the private my private group off Facebook, off Instagram, and all that at katherineperry.net and join our free community. If you join there, you'll be able to access not only the archives of all of these calls and the audios, you'll be able to find all the commanding uh, cashathons. You'll find audios, I mean, uh, videos of our a lot of our past circles where we dealt with um, particular challenges that people were going through, um, very special private teachings that I did for groups for about two years. Then I have a lot of my special teachings in there and blog posts. You definitely want to tune into that. So if you haven't joined the free community yet, please be sure and do so. Okay. All right. So what are we talking about? We're going to find our vision and we always start with a lens. And, you know, when we talk about vision, we usually see a quote like this, but, you know, I'm loving Arnold Schwarzenegger these days, you know, when the older he's getting, I am finding myself like falling in love with him because he's wiser and kinder and he's got this big heart for service. And he always did. He always had a vision, not only for his life, but his own impact. And um, he had, a, you know, we always think about how talented and amazing he is. But, you know, what started that fire in him was that he was bullied because growing up in Austria, his dad had been in, was in the Nazi re regime. And so they were outcast and he was bullied and he, um, and his dad was very abusive, right? And so he had these really difficult circumstances, but he turned that all of those circumstances into something greater and i always have to admire him you know we always think about all the you know being a movie star and that life that type of thing good morning miss lenora so happy to see you but um i i just uh the more i learn about him and he always like puts himself out there he's always put his life out there this is who i am right or wrong and then he always seems to be invested in his growth at whatever age. And I'm really seeing him in his older statesman years. And uh, I've seen a lot of his posts to people and it's just so kind and loving. And so um, I've started paying more attention to the things that he says. And so Arnold says this about vision. You've got to believe in yourself. You've got to have a very clear vision and you've got to have the fire in your belly and go out and not be shy with working because it takes a lot of work. And if anyone knows anything about him, of course, we know that he's kind of like legendary in his discipline and his hard work. But at the same time, you know, he did have challenges. He did have to push through. He had a lot of help along the way. He found his community. He found friends. And he committed himself to whatever it took. And I will say that through the difficulty and someone who's had to find vision and push through. And, I, you know, I had felt like I had a big call in my life. I felt like I had these great gifts. I mean, I had a big like psychic awakening that was really powerful and that put extra pressure. And um, at the same time here, you're pushing through, you're going through the challenges, but this is where fulfillment, this state of fulfillment, when we do the one command statement and we say, I don't know how, I only know it so now, and I am fulfilled. This is where that idea of fulfillment comes in because you know, whatever you're going through is worth it. Like right now, you may be searching for a vision, for an answer. I don't know. And I think it could just feel like no matter what you do, you're not getting to it. You find that you may be releasing, you may be praying, you may be reading more, you may be just kind of on this search through the internet, right? You may be suddenly hungry for books. And this time period is called the waiting period, okay, or the waiting room. And when you find yourself in the waiting room, first, I just want to say you are not in the wrong place when you're in the waiting room. But this is a time for rest, 
reflection and building your resources. Okay. I don't know who needed to hear that. And you have to actually just keep aligning yourself to this one idea that the right answer is right here. The right answer is right here, right now. Okay. And as you prepare yourself, you're going to, the answer will be revealed. And what's going to be interesting is when you do get that vision, when you get that inspiration, when it becomes crystal clear to you what to do, it's going to be perfect. You're going to find that whatever you've gone through, what you're going through now or in the past is exactly what you needed to do to condition yourself and prepare yourself. So right now, at the time of this recording, we're in what's called the Saturn moon. We are in a super moon tonight, and there's always this big energy. And a couple of things happen with one, a full moon. A full moon really is about releasing what no longer serves you. And this particular full moon is about releasing any negative self-talk, releasing those negative and limiting beliefs. Okay? And so... Uh, someone had mentioned earlier this week, I'm releasing, I'm releasing, I'm releasing. I'm going, yeah, releasing is good, but if you focus on releasing, you just keep releasing. You've got to turn your attention to what you want. And as you think about what you want, you naturally start letting go of everything that no longer aligns to that. Okay. So this is what's important. Here's the other thing. There's, um, there's an old expression about if you want to know somebody squeeze them and you'll see what comes out, right? And so whatever, when life is squeezing, when there's challenges or whatever, and if what pops out is anger, blame, <laughs> the, um, screaming, yelling, bad, you know, bad acting, that's going to let you know what the content of the character of that person was. You're going to let them know what their beliefs about themselves and the world are, right? And that's why I'm you know, the phenomenon of seeing all these Karens in the world. We go, we're kind of demonizing these people, but what's happening, it's really a demonstration, not of, hey, all these entitled people, but it's, you know, I think there is to a degree, but actually what's happening is it's, I really think it's showing how much pressure everyone is under right now. On every sphere of life, we are under pressure. But remember, like a coal, that gets all that pressure, what happens to it? It turns into a diamond. And right now you are in your diamond making process. So when we see them, we see that their anxiety and their fear and they're going, this isn't right, right? They, and, and also that idea of entitlement is, hey, if you get rights, that means I must lose rights. Okay, there's that assumption. And the thing is, rights aren't like a pie. It was like, hey, there's only so many rights. I get some rights and so some get taken away. No, the more rights we afford each other and for freedom and happiness, right? And so that everyone's needs and desires can be met, the more there is for more people, right? That That's the paradox. And when we're in that fear, and I really think that a lot of that, someone mentioned, and I'm off completely off track, I'm going to get back to this, but someone really did a, a great job of talking about this. And they talked about people of European ancestry, okay? And they said that in the European ancestry, we have to remember that in our DNA are people who went through the Black Plague, okay? Now, this had a big impact. And so if our strategy is to separate away take care of what's me and mine. We have to, we have to isolate, right? And then the survival, the level of survival was so great that you really couldn't afford to help anyone else. And so this is in us that we have to separate and cut ourselves off and it's, you know, us or them survival. And that's literally in our DNA where other cultures didn't have that and their survival came through community and cooperation through coming together. Okay. And this is literally how we evolved as a species. So what's happened, you know, how can we do that? Well, we have to start with the individual, right? We have to come back into, I don't know how um, I'm safe in my community. I don't know how there is more than enough for me. I don't know how I'm tapped into greater resources than what 
I can see, right? So whatever challenge you meet, and this is a little one command teaching, when you notice that there is a belief or a fear, you immediately need to meet it with, you know, you, you need to be able to question it. Um, just here's a silly little non, you know, survival mode way of thinking about this. And we're going to go into these um, six or five ways that we are blocking our vision. Um, years ago, when I was, I had um, made the commitment to join Asara and join, um, we're going to found the One Command Global Community, and I wanted to go full-time into the seminars with her because I was flying around. I was doing all this promotion and teaching, and it was like, you know, I feel like I'm supposed to be with you. And Asara lived up in Seattle, and that's where my daughter and grandbaby were at the time. And it's like, this just makes sense. I want to be up here. Here's the way to make this happen. I'm flying around anyway. Um, why am I paying all this rent for a, for a, a wonderful house? But um, I made that decision to go. And there's this one little section in Dallas I just love to go through. And um, it was the day that I had pre, you know, it was the the garage sales were done. I was going home to pack up the last of my stuff. And like the next day I was going to be getting the car and driving away. And so I'm driving down the road and there's this one section that I just love to drive through on Forest Lane in Dallas. And it's the section where every year the school kids paint this one wall. And I always love seeing this mural. And the wall was probably about 50 feet long. And so I just... I, sometimes I would go out of my way because I just loved that idea of kids just, you know, sharing their creativity and the happiness and the hope and the inspiration. And I thought, wow, I'm never going to see this again. I'm really going to miss this. And then immediately I just challenged it. It was like, why is that true? Why do you think you're never going to come back? Why do you think that you wouldn't come back to Dallas and see friends and family, which I had a huge community of friends at the time. Why would you think that leaving means never returning? Well, that had been my history. That's how I'd been conditioned. And then immediately I realized that that's why it was hard for me to make change because my whole life growing up, we moved a lot. And as soon as I moved to a new house, a lot of the relationships left. My mom was married three times while I was growing up. So I lost whole families. Okay. So, I mean, tumultuous growing up. And I just realized that this conditioned belief about once you go, there's never any going back. You lose it all. Immediately, I stopped and I did a command. It's like, I don't know how, as I move forward, I have even more friends and support and I build on my deep relationships and you know i came back home about seven years later and i got to you know maintain all those relationships i'd come back several times and so you have to be able to meet it in the moment okay so good morning hey good morning mr david let's see who else we hear good morning miss lauren happy to see everyone okay so i'm gonna get a little sip of water Okay, so when we see a quote like this, we go, oh, gosh, he had that clear vision. He had that fire in the belly. You know, he wasn't shy. He put himself out there. And if you remember, you know, he, he still has a thick accent, but Arnold had a super thick accent. And it, a lot of people do not like foreigners of any kind, right? And so he had to overcome all of these reasons that he gave himself about why he couldn't do it. But I want to address one, this fire in the belly idea and what can stop us. We have this idea that there's this fire outside of us that we somehow, somehow either arrives like, ah! <laughs> arrives it comes to us or you know it's bestowed upon us or we come upon it right like oh my gosh there's the fire i want this here's my burning bush but you know what it's fire in the belly and there was something that lit you up inside 
that's and this is something about your own unique essence so when we think about what is blocking our ability to vision i'm going to say it starts one with self-identity you don't see yourself as someone who has an innate gift or ability um, or you don't see yourself as someone who can move forward you don't see yourself as someone who could live a different way but it comes down to self-identity okay so number one you know like the main thing that separates creative people from non-creative people is just creative people have an idea about being creative and when we think about creativity a lot of times we think about only art right or, or music right we think about the arts but there's strategic thinking there's communication there's problem solving there's how we decorate there's just our general approach to life and it's all creation you're at your essence at the heart of who you are you are a creator okay and so if you feel separate from that identity of being a creator don't worry you could literally just decide to become a creative person okay good news and then you practice but we're going to keep going on so what else could stop us in getting our vision? The next, conditioning and belief. Remember I told the story about how I don't think I'll ever see this beautiful wall again. And it was like one of those, it wasn't just a pretty wall that day. It was the sun, you know, the sky was that perfect shade of blue. And there were these perfect puffy white clouds. And it was that time of day that the green was green. I mean, it was just, it, it was just this moment. And I just was aware of this. And what rose up in that moment was not my hope of the future, but my condition about my fear of loss, right? And so you may have conditioning and beliefs that are limiting your ability to access your vision, okay? Or, and even if you get an idea, you may, have, may condition yourself to shut down, okay? So just understand that whatever rises up when you have an i want a need or desire and what rises up in opposition to that is just your conditioning it is not the truth okay good morning miss kathy thanks for joining the other thing that can stop us is having a stressed mind or body if you are not getting the rest if you are worried if you are in a straight up survival mode, it is going to be really hard to think of a creative idea and you're going to be more reactive. Okay. Reactive, a reactive mind is not a visionary mind. It's a remembering mind. Okay. Because you're going back to the past and you're not thinking it does not move you forward. Okay. So, when we have a stressed mind or body, your brain literally <laughs> shrinks and your IQ can drop up to 10 points. And so, and it limits you from accessing your resources and abilities, okay? Because you're all, all of your systems are already stressed. You don't have enough mental or emotional or energetic bandwidth to vision. Okay, and this is why the conditioning and we have this stressed mind. If you want to create something new, you've got to give yourself some space to do that. The, the easiest way to make sure that you do have that space is make sure that you have a, a meditation routine. Study is showing the benefits of meditation. And we're talking about 10 to 15 minutes a day of just stillness. And it's just not helping you only that day. It can help you later in the week, in the month. So as you start giving yourself space for some quietness and start just one, connecting into your own self and your own feeling states, and then allowing yourself to just be present. That's all meditation is until there's quietness. There's going to be room for something else to arrive. Okay. 
All right. So what else can stop us? Our environment. If you aren't in the right creative environment, and I have to say this is something that I kind of struggle with. Um, <clears throat> I tend to kind of get in my head and I notice that, you know, I have I've been home all day. I've only I have only been in my own backyard and um, it gets very limited. And when I need space to create, I need physical space around me. A big thing that stops a lot of people and the number one block that all my clients report is clutter. And did you know that in manifesting anything, the first step is clearing clutter, the physical clutter and the mental clutter. Okay. So you don't have to clean your whole house from top to bottom, but you have got to create an environment wherever you are outside of you and inside of you so that it's conducive to creation. Okay. And so that's why for me, you know, um, <laughs> driving really helps because that helps, um, that takes me out of that beta brain and I tend to go into a more creative mode. Well, now I have to find some different ways, right? Um, those nice long leisurely drives on the highway. I'm being a little more conservative right now, but doing whatever I can to change my environment. So I'll do things like I'll go to a coffee shop when I really need to get in that creative space. Sometimes just, you know, popping into a coffee shop, um, getting around other people who are thinking about things, hearing those voices and that clatter, um, that actually calms me down. I've worked as a waitress for many years in my youth, and there's something about all that noise turns into white noise, but also there's all this active thinking going on, and it kind of turns on my brain. So investigate. Spend some time looking at how you can use, you know, how you can shift your environment or use other environments to stimulate your um, visioning capacity. Um, hey, you may have just never learned how to... Um, vision i mean this is a practice okay and it could feel like play or maybe your mind kind of goes off in different directions and that's why using tools like mind mapping are really important and um, there's the disney creative strategy that we love we use in the commanding wealth there's um, different um, strategies like at the lower um, right down here you'll see something called the fishbone and it's like, hey, what is our problem? And then you're able to identify the different problems. Then you can use this same format to create new solutions. And then there's a um, process called the pink sheet. I don't have time to go into this, but it really, this process developed by Matt Church teaches you how to do deep thinking. And they have this amazing process using sheets like this that, one, you can hammer out what your bigger concept is, but using these simple sheets, you could literally come up with a solution to just about anything. If you wanted to write a book, if you had a creative idea, you wanted to uh, do a movie, design a new thing. This is a deep thinking process. And there's a lot more like this, but you've never really um, given your space, self space or time to learn how to like yesterday i told the story about how i used visioning to help my granddaughter carolyn get her room clean right to where we said hey here's the big picture you know how do you want to feel <laughs> like we knew she had a big job so how do you want to feel when this is over what will that look like we i accessed her feeling state that she was already in and redirected that and then started chunking it out so I'm already teaching Carolyn how to think about things rather than to react to being in trouble and trying to do the stuff that won't make me mad, right? That's how most of us are trained. We aren't trained in how to vision, how to think about it, how to take action on it, and how to measure those results. So there literally is a six-step visioning process that I teach people, you know, I work with them in the big vision mapping process that I take them through and I love having a big whiteboard, but we align all the values. We find out, 
you know, one, what matters to you. We find out what your skills and gifts are. We find out um, what's working in your life. We get this whole picture. We find out what the challenge is, how you got here, and then where you want to go. So we get that big picture. Then we start, you know, brainstorming solutions. And then it, we just bring it down and starts getting really, really granular and then by the time we're done with this six step process, you have a very good working plan that's really easy to figure out where you're going, what the steps are, what help you need, and then how to measure your success. And then even where and to be able to identify where things are working, because a lot of times when there's a vision and we start moving forward, first we're in that big high. But then we hit that first opposition. And because we don't have those steps laid out, because we don't understand how to do it, then what happens is we don't know where to look for the solution to make the adjustment. So this is a process. Okay. And if up until now you've gotten a big picture idea, you started taking action, and then you felt like you failed your vision, you failed yourself, or you, you know, you start that negative self-talk, which, what did I say at the beginning? It is the super moon hit. Today's your day to dump that baby. We're going to get rid of that. Okay. (laughs) But whatever opposition that you meet, start with um, a command around that. Okay. So someone said, I've been decluttering 15 bags to Goodwill in the last two weeks. Um, And I feel so much lighter already. Good for you. Congratulations on that. Doesn't that feel great? I sat down. um, I have notebooks. Notebooks because I write when I think and I'm I'm working out ideas. And I've got notebooks, notebooks, notebooks. And I was hanging on to them. And I have all these great kind of swipe files and stuff. And um, I noticed I just had all this stuff. And it was like it was blocking my creativity. And so... Um, I've got one more place to go declutter, and that's my closet because I've got some clothes to get rid of. I live in such a tiny space. But, yeah, it was liberating to throw away all those ideas. Like I was carrying around these notebooks and guarding them like, I don't know, someday I'll go back and I'll find that one solution (laughs) or something. So, yeah, you literally do feel energetically lighter. Okay, I want to get questions or feedback right now. I'm going to take a little sip of water. Hey, has this been helpful? Give me a thumbs up. I would love to get your, uh, if there's any questions or any feedback on this. Uh, (laughs) I always appreciate you being here. Okay, so let's go ahead. We're going to go into our one command. So right now, I'm just going to, I want to do a command with you. And I'm going to come back to that first idea. Okay. Yeah, Kathy. Hey, I've got a workshop that's going to be coming up real soon. And I'll be announcing it. Okay. All right. Let's see here. I've been getting uh, out of Facebook groups that don't fit anymore. Hey, that's huge. That is huge. You know, I've been going through and um, unfriending a lot of people because of their content. Their mindset's been cluttering up my feed a lot. And so, yeah, we've got to clean up that social stuff too, right? Okay. So let's come back to the very start, that we don't see ourselves as a visionary, right? We don't know how to, uh, we are not someone who has a clear vision. We are not an Arnold Schwarzenegger that has that fire in her belly that, Um, doesn't have that discipline and that drive, um, that doesn't have uh, whatever was in him that got turned on. I I mean, I think that's where a stubborn mind can really serve you, right? (laughs) But, you know, stubbornness can be turned into commitment. And he, that's what he did. He turned his stubbornness into commitment. All right. So here's the first one. We're just going to start with this idea. I don't know how I came to be a visionary. I only know I have a great vision now and I am fulfilled. To start with that statement, 
I don't know how I came to be a, a great visionary. I only know I have a great vision inside me now, and I am fulfilled. All right, and then we're going to leap off of that, okay? So we're going to go through the six steps of the one command. I just want to invite you to take a breath, close your eyes, settle into your body, just feel your connection to the earth. And that creative life force energy of the earth. Yes, some people, you may feel like you're way up in your head, and your neck, and your shoulders. Slide down your spine into your body, into your hips, into your knees. We feel that energy going right down into your toes. Thank you. And now, just shift your awareness to allow that creative life force energy to come up, up, up into your body as you bring your attention to your heart and you align to your purpose. And your purpose is you want to find your vision. You want to be able to get the vision, turn it into a working plan, take action and get measurable results. go and just let that love in your heart expand out now I invite you to become aware of your connection to source and just picture visualize or imagine your connection to source your spiritual life force energy aligning to you, connecting to you, aligning to the creative life force energy that's coming up from the earth, supporting your body, aligning to your purpose. With your eyes closed, very softly, roll your eyes up as if you're trying to look up to the top of your head. Don't strain. But just very softly up and picture, visualize, or imagine that you are traveling up, 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 up above the earth, out into space, up, 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 continuing on, all the way past to the outer edges of the observable universe, into the beautiful black velvety void of space. In the distance, you may see a teeny pinprick of light head towards that, and soon you break through the darkness into the light of pure, open potential. We're going to state our first command with your eyes up. I don't know how I came to be a visionary and have the ability to fulfill that vision. I only know I am now and I am fulfilled. And just let your eyes relax. Let that expand out to an idea even greater that serves more good. Eyes back up. I don't know how my mind is conditioned to create a vision. I don't know how my beliefs align and support my vision. I only know. I have trained my mind to command a vision. And my beliefs support my vision now. And I am fulfilled. Keep your eyes. Now just softly let them relax. And I don't know how my mind and body are relaxed and open and able to receive and have the ability to conceive a new concept 
a new potential for my life. I only know I do now and I am fulfilled and I don't know how I have the creative space and the ideal environment to support my vision. I only know that I am in the absolute right place in the right time and I have everything I need and more to create and fulfill my vision. And I don't know how. I have the innate ability to learn new systems and strategies, new ways of thinking, new ways of acting, new levels of awareness. I only know that I am activating my ability to learn quickly, to absorb that learning and to act upon that learning and apply that learning now. And I am fulfilled. Just let all that go. We're going to let that expand out to an idea even greater that serves more good in its fulfillment. Just let it go, let it go, let it go. And now your eyes are relaxed and just feel yourself coming back into your body. We've expanded our consciousness. And now just actively begin to receive these new attributes, these new abilities as a direct download from source. And as these new abilities, this greater state of being, this greater capacity begins to arrive, we're just going to start to unwind, unwind, unwind old conditioning, old programs, old thoughts, images, and ideas that no longer serve us. And we're just going to allow these new ideas to begin to rewind and integrate and just open yourself to receiving. And in this space between knowing and not knowing, let there only be love. And what's also coming in is a renewed faith in yourself. And a trust in yourself. There we go. And now just bring your attention back to your heart. And think about your ability to envision. To create that vision. To get the details of that vision. To act upon that vision. When you think about that, what do you know now that you didn't know before? Can you think back on times that you absolutely got a vision, you took action on it, and maybe you may start to remember or realize that any real change that happened in your life that you wanted to make happen was because you had that vision. Yeah. And so you can open your eyes, and we always encourage everybody, after you do these one commands, You want to write down a lot of ideas are coming in. Get them written down as quickly as possible. And then you're going to get inspired. You're going to you're going to say, I want to do this. Well, what's happening is that's, you know, you're getting the signal that you need to take action on this right away. And the reason you want to do that is this will lock in all that download. And here's just a, a little example. Of, of how that happens and, and why. So one of the things that I'm able to do through my hypnotherapy training is I um, have this process that's a fast, fast phobia cure. And I work with people on all types of fears and phobias. It's, it's, it's amazing how fast it can work clearing a lifetime of phobia. And when I was learning this, the first thing I was taught was that Let's say a person has a fear of snakes. And right now it's just a generalized idea of a fear of snakes, right? And they don't realize that they've actually organized their entire life so that they will never, ever come in contact with a shape, with a snake in any shape or form. A lot of people have such a severe phobia of snakes that they can't even look at a picture. They can't even 
you know, if they even knew that a magazine existed in their environment, that there was a snake, they would like be freaked out. That's how severe this can be. And But this is how severe and impactful our conditioning is. This is how sneaky our fears are. And so when we would do the fast, fast phobia cure, the first thing we would do is, you know, start, you know, we're rating it and it would be neutral and it would be like, yeah, the idea of a snake, a picture of a snake in a magazine, I would be fine. Hey, if you saw a snake, what would you do? I would probably be all right. And then what we do is we try to do something that would um, simulate you know, actually coming in contact with snakes. So like people who are afraid of snakes, can't, I, I hope and if you're, I hope you're not afraid of snakes and me hearing me talk all this snake talk. But what the first thing we do is we would bring a snake in, like either a live snake or even a rubber snake. We might show a picture of a snake, but you have to test it immediately. So that way it would demonstrate one to the subconscious mind and to your conscious mind. Yeah, there's been a change you'd be able to gauge your reaction, right? But it puts you in a forward movement, okay? So that's what I'm take, talking about. You want to take action. You want to test yourself right away. So if you get an idea to do something, take action as quickly as possible, okay? All right. Was this helpful? Yes, no? <laughs> Did you learn something today? I would love to get your comments, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and let you go. I appreciate you taking time to be with me. Please listen to this again because there is a lot that went into here. And I will be announcing um, a visioning class very soon. And I hope that you'll be able to join me. So until the next time, this is Captain Perry, the Big Vision Coach. And I witness your mastery, everybody. Bye-bye. Hey, I wanted to be sure and mention that if you wanted to get connected into your vision sooner if you wanted to be able to tap into whatever that greater you know resource is within you and you need some help or support let's book a free call let's talk about your situation and talk about how i may be able to help you the call is free and we're just going to talk about your situation and if it looks like you know uh, i'm a fit for you or you're a fit for me then we'll have that conversation about the next steps but definitely want to connect with me and all you got to do is book a free call and you go to this uh, link that's here at the bottom and it's in the bottom of the description bit.ly bit.ly backslash big vision coach and uh, let's set up a time to talk all right my loves have an amazing week bye-bye